all of the crack pie desserts that I'm sharing with you today come from this cookbook, The Taste of Home recipes. They're all like potluck recipes and I was excited to try them out. Not all of them are hits. Stay tuned to see which one flopped. I was also able to find all of these on the Taste of Home website, so I will link all of the recipes below so you can get the nitty gritty details. You can see other people's reviews. My absolute favorite was the pumpkin pie pudding. I would eat that all year round, but especially it has a great fall flair. I'm gonna share with you guys is called Blueberry Grunt. This was a wonderful dish that had like a biscuit dumpling on top and really juicy blueberries at the bottom. It was super simple to throw together and I'll definitely make this again. I needed six cups of blueberries. I used frozen blueberries from Walmart, sugar and water, and then you add pure almond extract. Those are the only four ingredients that go in at the very beginning of this and you stir it up. I did not have to grease the inner pot for this. And again, I'm using my Instant Pot and my Instant Pot glass lid. Instead of an actual crock pot, I'm just using the slow cook setting. Okay, so in the seven minutes that this started, I got my dumplings ready. So here's the dumplings recipe, but you don't put it in until three hours later. But I got everything ready because my son is sleeping. This is one of the ways that I am able to cook or to do things is I've shared it before, cook, make things, prep in my pockets of time. Nap time is perfect. So I can leave this out, this out, this out, this out, this out. So I have my sugar, salt, baking powder, shortening, flour, and then my milk and my butter, I'll just stick in the fridge until it's time for me to make the uh, dumpling recipe. And then I have it very easy once that time comes. So just a reminder, all of these measurements will be listed below in the link to the actual recipe, but I went ahead and added everything together, mixed up my dry ingredients, and then cut in the butter and the shortening, added the milk, mixed it together to form the dough, and again, this is after the blueberries cooked for three hours, and then I put the Instant Pot lid back on and came back an hour and a half later. It doesn't need to sit for an hour and a half, but we went out to dinner and came back to this. And here is the blueberry grunt. My guests really like this, and we definitely recommend this as a dessert. This one was a flop. Truly, it was a disappointment because we love chocolate and peanut butter mixtures, and no one in my family would eat this. So I started off mixing the peanut butter and the milk together, and then you mix your dry ingredients for the cake portion. Everything's outlined in the recipe. But you mix together the dry ingredients to the peanut butter mixture to get your cake batter. And then you make your um, cocoa sugar mixture. I'm putting into a well-greased pan. And while I had the cake ready to go, I was having my water boil in this electric kettle, which we love. Once I had that water boiling, I'm able to measure it out and add it into the sugar and cocoa. This makes like a chocolate sauce that you pour on top of the peanut butter cake. And while that sounds really good, I cooked this for three hours on high, just as the directions said, and it was gooey. So I did it for another two hours and it was still super gooey. So maybe in an actual crock pot, I would have had different results, but it turned out to be slop. I didn't even take an after picture. I will tell you, it didn't actually taste that bad but the texture was so off, no one would eat it. Thankfully, the pumpkin pie pudding was redeeming and amazing. I absolutely love this and definitely will be making this on repeat all fall and winter. The ingredients again are listed below. Here it is in the cookbook. I thought it was so cute that I was excited to try it just from looks alone and it came out perfectly. So Cal is my sous chef during this recipe and he is very excited to cook with me. We started off by mixing our Bisquick sugar spices and once those were all nice and mixed well together, we could add in the wet ingredients. It does only cough for two eggs, but since I was using little eggs, I used three instead of two. The butter, vanilla, milk, and pumpkin. So this recipe is really simple because once you mix everything, it truly is set and forget, and then you scoop it and you're done. And if you want, you can add whipped cream on top. And of course, that is what I did. I added lots of whipped cream on top. But you just mix it up, get all the clumps out. It took quite a while to get the clumps, but you want a nice, really smooth consistency. Eventually it gets nice and smooth and it actually looks just like a pumpkin pie batter that you would pour right into a crust. I think probably the big difference between this and pumpkin pie is the Bisquick. Now I am spraying it very obsessively to get every cranny oiled so that this didn't stick. It needs a well-greased crock pot or inner pot and I dumped it all in. 
set it for seven hours on low. I was literally gone all day, and by the time I came back, it was really nice. It wasn't the perfect, most even consistency. It was a little more gooey in places, but definitely cooked. It has you take a temperature reading to make sure that it reaches 160 degrees. I actually did check in multiple spots. It was done. I think that's just to make sure that the egg is cooked, but it came very even um, temperature wise. And the consistency, it had like some thick, more cake-like parts and some more pudding parts, but really all together, it was really nice. I think the really nice benefit of making this over a pumpkin pie is how warm it was. So it was very comforting on top of being delicious. Okay, I'll say so you are my pumpkin lover, right? Mm -hmm. So you haven't tried this yet. This is pumpkin pie pudding. You didn't want whipped cream. So go ahead and try it and tell me what you think. So this final recipe I made because I thought just my husband would really like it, but I ended up snacking on these way more than I thought I would. They're kind of addicting. They have a very mild sweetness at the end, but it's a very pleasant flavor and they're super buttery, which I like. So all of these are nuts that I bought at Aldi. I have almonds, walnuts, and pecans, and the measurements again listed below in the link at the recipe, but I have mixed together my ginger, my allspice, my cinnamon, the powdered sugar and the melted butter and once that's well mixed in the inner pot it did say to grease it but I thought that was enough grease on its own and I didn't do that I mixed it all together and then I added the nuts and you want to make sure that they're well coated and you put them on slow cook for three hours I ended up stirring at an hour and a half so right in the middle of the three hours just gave it a nice stir and then once the three hours was done I remove them and let them dry. You can see that I once again am using my Instant Pot clear lid. Every time I use my Instant Pot, whether for serving or on the slow cook setting, I use that lid and I love it. So one thing that I did here that I didn't do according to the recipe is I added a little bit of salt. My nuts weren't salted at all and the recipe didn't call for salt so I thought it was necessary and I definitely think it was a good addition. And while I really did like this recipe, I think next time I might also add in a quarter cup to half a cup of brown sugar. So I had laid out the nuts on parchment paper to dry for about an hour so that they weren't wet anymore when I stored them in an airtight container and then they're perfect to munch on. They won't last long though because they were quite tasty. If your sweet tooth is not satisfied yet, make sure you check out the s'mores brownie recipe. It is a recipe that I made up for the Instant Pot. I adapted other recipes that I found. It's right here. It's super delicious, and I hope you check it out. Ciao down and ciao.